try to catch an early tender. The ship is empty right now. Look, there's nobody here. It's like we have the whole ship to ourselves right now. Look at the casino. Isn't it beautiful? This is open 24 hours, O'Shea's Bar and Grill. Well, we went down to eat breakfast and the, um, the, the captain called that if you are ready to be tendered, that you can go. So we get to tender over with about 10 people. Good morning. I think there is a sea of sailboats. There's the tender boat that we just took over. We're gonna go try to meet the city bus. Um, it's free here and it runs like every 20 minutes. Okay, so it's just a very short walk to the bus stop and we are waiting for bus line 67 and it's gonna take us right to the cliff walk. That's a really nice public beach over there. It is. See, this town of Newport is very clean. You guys catching anything? Wow, look at this. People walking down there to fish. That is beautiful. Oh, wow. Okay, so here's the backside of the Breakers. It was built in 1895 and is a National Historic Landmark. The Breakers is the grandest of Newport's summer cottages and a symbol of the Vanderbilt's family, social, and financial preeminence in the Gilded Age. The Vanderbilt's were railroad people. This is the Vineland Estate, and it was built in 1882 for the tobacco heiress Catherine Wolfe. The house was built with a theme of a Viking settlement, and it was sold in 1896 to a railroad tycoon who was married to a Vanderbilt. Well, I have this app. It's like a plant finder, and these berries, this is called a Rugosa Rosebush. It's non-toxic to humans and pets. It's a shrub, a perennial. Well, we finished with the cliff walk and now we are sitting here waiting on the bus to take us back to the hub. We're gonna do a little bit of shopping downtown now that everything has probably opened up. And Fred wants to see if he can find a lobster roll and I might see if I can find a Newport t-shirt. So this has been so much fun. It's been great not being with a group of people and doing this on our own. Highly recommend it. Just do a little bit of research and you can do this too if that's what you choose to do. But it's so much fun. Well, we went to eat at a hotel 
we had lunch, a nice lunch, and now we've made it back for our 1130 trolley tour. We're going to continue on up Toro Street now. Most of these homes you are seeing here on your left-hand side are Victorian era homes dating back to the 1850s and 1860s. Now the Hotel Viking is a luxury hotel. It's actually built in 1926. That is the Elms right there. Now the Elms was the summer home of Edwin Berwin. Now Edwin Byrne was a German immigrant. He actually made his fortune in coal. He built his little 47,000 square foot summer car that you see there. 1901. Okay, off the right hand side, Kings Park. And of course, beautiful Newport Harbor in the background. That is the Eisenhower House right there. Built in, eight, built in 1873. It is a Victorian style mansion. It was originally built by the Navy as the commander's residence. Oh my gosh, to think that Eisenhower was here. In the winter time, look at how great this porch would be. When it's freezing outside, is that pretty? So let's go upstairs real quick. Wow, think of the meetings that may have gone on in here. <laughs> Great mirror. Oh, look at the view that they had. Beautiful. Yeah, they blew it up. Which one did you just bought recently? One of the old Look at these beautiful windows, floor to ceiling. Beautiful. Well, this was a real treat to see this. He said that it's free to tour on Mondays. Today is Monday. And um, it's not on the typical stop, but he said we were a few minutes early. So he said we had 10 minutes here. This is the beginnings of Hammersmith Farm, originally a 50 acre estate. It was originally established in 1640. And if you look up in the distance out there, that red roof mansion you see, that is the mansion called Hammersmith. Built in 1887, it is a 28-room Victorian-style mansion. It was built by John Auchincloss. Now, the Auchincloss family direct descendants of the Standard Oil fortune, which was John D. Rockefeller and Company. Now, John Auchincloss was the great-grandfather to a guy named Hugh Auchincloss Jr. Now, Hugh Auchincloss Jr., well, that was Jacqueline Kennedy's stepfather. So, this is actually where Jacqueline Kennedy grew up as Jacqueline Bouvier, which was her maiden name. This is where she became a Newport socialite, if you will, where she infamously learned to ride her horses right here on this estate. And in 1953 at St. Mary's Parish, which you will see in the latter part of the tour, is where she married Senator John F. Kennedy. Now the wedding reception was actually held right here on the grounds of Hammersmith. Now over 1,200 guests attended the wedding reception. If you look directly across the bay, past that red buoy, just saw that building flash out there. That white building you see on Jamestown Point, that's the Beaver Tail Lighthouse. That is actually the third oldest lighthouse in the United States, just flashed again. We have absolutely spectacular views out here, and it is all for free, because this is a state park. So you can come out here on your own, you can park your car here for free, grab yourself a bench and enjoy the beautiful views. You can go walking on the rocks, you can go swimming, you can go fishing. If you wanted to have yourself a beautiful picnic while you're here in Newport, the left hand side's got awesome spots for picnics. You want to catch yourself a beautiful sunset, you get out here on a beautiful day like today, come out here about 6.30 in the evening, you will catch yourself a beautiful sunset going over the water. So at this point in the tour, I like to tell people to just sit back and relax and enjoy these beautiful views. Now Indian Springs is one of the smaller 
gilded era mansions as it is only 14,400 square feet with only eight bedrooms a measly 13 bathrooms I don't know how they survived 15 fireplaces why do you need 15 fireplaces in your summer home Let's look off to the right hand side right there. That beautiful Gilded Era mansion you see right there called Seafair. That's the summer home of Jay Leno. He bought it in 2017 for 13.5 million. He stole it because that was right before the market went crazy. He's probably worth 30 million now. Yeah. He's actually in town, just so you know. He comes up here for August and September. There's a big car event here in about two weeks. Right, it's called the Concourse d'Elegance and he's a big part of that. Right through these gates here, you are looking at the former summer home of Frederick Vanderbilt, and it is called Rough Point. 39,000 square feet, 67 rooms, and in 1923, purchased by James Buchanan Duke. James Buchanan Duke made his fortune in tobacco. When he passed away in 1925, his net worth was well over $200 million. Now he left half his fortune. To Duke University down in the Carolinas and he left the other half to his little 12 year old daughter Doris Duke 1925 little Doris Duke richest little girl in the world 1966 possible murderer because it was at those very dates right there in 1966 Doris Duke was having an argument with her designer named Enrique he was actually leaving her to go out to California okay he pulled his car up there, Doris Duke was in the passenger seat. He pulled the car up right there, put that car into park, put that emergency brake on, he got out to open those very gates right there. Well, Doris Duke slid into the driver's seat, put that car into drive, pulled that emergency brake, stepped on that gas. She pinned that man to those gates right there. In fact, she not only pinned him to those very gates right there, she knocked the gates off the hinges, took him across the street, into a ditch in a tree on the other side. That man was killed. Well. Of course, there's an investigation. Two detectives come down from Newport. One detective convinced there were too many coincidences for it to not be intentional, okay? He told Doris Duke that, and within a half hour, Chief of Police Radis shows up, suspected to be mob ties, but Chief Radis did show up. He told him he's taking over the investigation. Well, Chief Radis did take over that investigation. He interviewed that witness. You know who the witness was? Doris Duke. And based on her statements alone, he closed that out, wrote the report, closed it out that night as an accident. Okay, so we have tickets to tour the breakers, which we saw a minute ago from the rear when we did the cliff walk. And uh, now we're going to see the inside. By the way, that trolley is a fantastic tour. I can't believe all these mansions here in this town. Un I don't know that I've ever seen anything like it. Opulent, I guess is the word that comes to mind. I guess this is where they had their parties. Overlooking the ocean. We just toured on our Uh-huh. So this room is called the Great Hall. And it's the largest room in the house. Its ceiling is painted to look like the sky. Many parties were held in this room over the years, with the first being in 1895 for Mrs. Gertrude Vanderbilt. Over the years, this hall was the scene of tricycle rides and sliding down the grand staircase on silver trays by children in the family. <laughs> this is a portrait of Cornelius Vanderbilt. Mr. Vanderbilt commanded the greatest fortune in America. This is the dining room. This is the billiard room. Wow, look at this patio area. Look at that ceiling. So this is the morning room. This is the music room. There is an app that you can download and walk through this mansion um, and you can listen to it if you want to.
There's also a brochure that you can get and it talks about all the rooms. I would just rather read that. The li this is the library and its central focus is the 16th century fireplace and chimney piece. Quite a lot of stairs to go up. Wow. Oh, this place is huge. Mr. Vanderbilt's bedroom. These people were such so ruthless in business that it sparked uh, the development of a number of the unions. And um, what Fred just said, there was certainly no profit sharing here. Wow, so I guess this is Mr. Vanderbilt's bathroom. Oh, this is Mrs. Vanderbilt's bedroom. Beautiful. Beautiful. It, the wall, it's a rounded room. Rotunda. Rotunda style bedroom. Beautiful. I guess that was her closet. You can imagine what beautiful clothes must have been hung in there at one time. Press the gold button at the bottom of your screen. So that was her closet that we saw a moment ago, but apparently this is the dressing room. Mrs. Vanderbilt's dressing room. And Gertrude Vanderbilt was the fourth of Mr. and Mrs. Vanderbilt's seven children. So throughout her bedroom, there are pictures and portraits of Gertrude and representations of her artwork. She became a noted sculptor and an important art patron. Gertrude married Harry Payne Whitney in the Breakers Music Room in 1896. In early 1931, she founded the Whitney Museum of American Art in New York City to promote and honor works by American artists. I guess this is a picture of her as she got older. Yeah, kind of like Jane Hathaway from the Beverly Hillbillies. You can always count on Fred for a clever line. That is funny. And right down here is where we were walking earlier today. You can see the cliff walk right down there. This was a guest bedroom. Now this tapestry is a 17th century Dutch tapestry. And it tells a story from the life of Alexander the Great. So this is a skylight above us. And it, it was made by American stained glass artist and was originally made for the Vanderbilt's main residence on Fifth Avenue in New York City. So there are eight family and guest bedrooms in this house, and there are 33 servant bedrooms. <laughs> the servant bedrooms are not on view, but I have seen a YouTube video where at one time they opened that up and I saw it. Um, it's pretty interesting. So this was the servant's staircase. And it will take us back to the first floor. So the kitchen was placed in a separate wing to prevent the potential spread of fire, cooking odors and noise from going into the main house. The French style cast iron stove, my goodness, was heated by coal and wood. The center work table is covered with zinc and the copper pots and pans are late 19th century pieces donated to the house. Look at this stove. I have never in my life seen such a large stove. Unbelievable. Look at all the cooking surface that they had. So this room is a two-story butler pantry. It was the final stop before the meals were served to the family in either the breakfast room or the dining room. China, crystal, and silver were washed and stored here. The china was used by the family for both formal and informal meals. Okay, so back down the servant staircase again. <laughs> and of course, they're gonna have a gift store in here. <laughs> 
awesome. Lots of books. So this is the garden area. Pretty nice backyard. Unbelievable that this was their summer cottage and that they were only here maybe six weeks out of the year. Unbelievable. So what did the house look like where they lived the rest of the year? I don't know. So the, the trolley doesn't come to pick us up for another hour and we're pretty much done. So rather than wait here, just hang around and wait, we're going to see if we can find the city bus system because it runs all over this town and all you got to do is jump on. Yeah, so right before you get to the breakers, right before you go inside, you have to get in the gate, but they have a little cafe here and a welcome center. Okay, so we are headed back to the tender boat and <laughs> I think everybody on the ship has the same idea at about the same time. Now, this is going to be interesting. This, these are all cru cruise ship people here in this town. I bet this town can't wait for the cruise ship people to leave. Well, we're getting ready to go to the Manhattan room for dinner. I'm, you know, we had a great day in Newport. It is just such a beautiful city. I loved it. Um, just incredible, all the mansions. <laughs> Hold this. It was just right there. I saw it. What is that out there? Is that a bull? Well, 